are freshmen from Drake High School of the Trex program, so we can bring Drake, you know, come try us out. And we are here to teach you a little bit about digital citizenship. I am here representing Binary Code. My name is Nick, and I am with Aaron. Boris, representing Internet Security. And I am Liam, representing some popular websites. People probably go to these. And we are here to teach you three of three things. One, what is digital citizenship? Two, how to become a good digital citizen. And three, how to avoid bad digital citizens. But before we start, Forrest has a little game for us on just how big the internet is. Woo! Alright guys, I'm Forrest, as you already know. And right now we're going to play a little game. I'm going to ask you all to put your heads down on the desk. And if I tap you on the shoulder, I'm, you're going to stand up and keep your eyes closed. I'm going to tell you a fact about the internet. Alright? Ah, my dog. Forest. Alright guys, everyone can open their eyes now. And this is around 90% of you. So this, this represents that 90% of adults in the U.S. own a cell phone. And this shows that digital communication is so prevalent in um, this time. All right, I'm going to ask you all to put your, he er, put your heads down again, okay? Same deal. I'm going to tap you on the shoulder. I'm going to ask you to stand up. Yeah. 
not in. His friend, your friend might be mad at you because you posted stuff, posted something about checking with them. Just be careful, okay? And then how do you guys think you can protect yourself online? Sure. Uh, maybe sites yeah. yeah, sites like Instagram, they have private accounts. Go ahead. Advertise people? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, you don't want those people online. Sure. Oh, okay. Sure. Um, I don't know. All right. So make sure you're not downloading anything that you don't know where it's coming from. From a site, from an email, make sure you know who the. If you get an email that looks a little funky, don't even try to open it. It could have anything weird or anything in it. Make sure you know who you're downloading from and what you're downloading. Look to see if a site asks for a lot of information. So what's your address? What's your name? What's your, what's your email? What's your work phone? What's your home phone? These are all things that, you know, can be sh like check if they're going to share it with, with, with if, check if they're just going to put it online or, you know, if it's going to be pretty private and safe. And the last thing is to make sure that you check for a site that does not put a lot of information. So if they don't even ask for your name or, or like a username, it could be a bullying site. I could respond anonymously. That means like I could respond anonymously to Nick, and um, he would have no idea who I am. So thank you. Thank you very much, Aaron. Now to leave you guys on a nice note, Liam has some amazing internet stories for you guys. Um, so you guys have probably all heard that the internet can be a scary place. There's bad people on the internet, and I'm not dismaying it, saying there isn't. But if you look in the right places, there are some very good, cool things that can happen on the internet. One of them, which is actually at Drake High, is Drake High has a whole Facebook page devoted to giving compliments to its students. So anyone can go on the page, post a nice thing about someone else, and it'll pop up on their Facebook account. So I mean, who doesn't like getting a comment or a, a nice thing said about them? And uh, another one that I actually have uh, found quite helpful is the fire department Twitter page. I don't know how many of you have a Twitter. I don't personally, but I found out about this online, and most fire departments have it. It's uh, whenever there's a big fire in, for us it would be Marin, or a big medical emergency, they would post something to their Twitter page with live updates about what's happening, how the fire's going. So if you think you might be in danger in the fire zone, or you could get out of the medical, the medical ambulance way, you could figure that out and you could be out of the zone and you would be safe. And the last one that I would like to talk to you about, who heard about uh, Batman in San Francisco? Okay, so that was a pretty cool day. I mean, everyone would have liked to have a day like that where a whole city comes together and celebrates you. And that actually started from a blogger. He was, uh, he picked up the story from the Make-A-Wish Foundation, which help ki helps kids with terminal illnesses. And so he picked up the story, and a bunch of people read his blog, and they gave a bunch of support. And then eventually, with all the support that happened through the Make-A-Wish Foundation and his blog, it became a reality for that kid to be Batman in San Francisco, and he had the day of his life. And so the internet can be a great place that helps people and helps everyone. So i just I just like to leave you, leave you on a good note. Thank you, Liam. And that's my presentation. I just have one more question for all you guys. Do you think you've learned the three things I told you to learn at the beginning? What's a digital citizen? How to be a good digital citizen? And how to avoid bad digital citizens? Raise your hand if you think you've learned that stuff. Nice. That's what we want. Any questions for us? Um, does the binary code on your um, shirt mean anything? Yeah, actually, it says DigiCity. Spelled in binary, which means digital citizenship. What's binary? Binary is basically a sequence of ones and zeros that can literally represent anything with just enough ones and zeros. Any other questions? Okay. Sweet. Thank you, guys. Thank you.